Regular listeners to this show will know what a fan I am of a gentleman and a band that I routinely call Britain's greatest living satirist. And I am so delighted that he's a guest on the Free Zone today. Nigel Blackwell from Half Man, Half Biscuit. How the hell are you, sir? I'm okay, Stuart. Thank you. Yourself? Yeah, not bad. Not bad. Am I right in thinking that, um, let's tread carefully here, no one cares about your creative hood, so get your flipping hedge cut. Mm. Am I right in thinking this has been your most commercially successful record, like, for Yonks? For a while, according to Jeff at Probe, yes, uh, I, I, I don't really kind of hear or see that aspect of it, but apparently he says it's gone okay, you know. Yeah, yeah that's, what, that's what I was hearing. And also, the, according to the Wikipedia entry, <laughs> it was Steve Wright's <laughs> album of the week when it was released. Oh, I, I can't believe that. <laughs> I, I'm sure I could uh, think of a few people who may have put that up. <laughs> Well, I, yeah, I proved that. I think it would be excellent if Steve Wright was, you know, widening his horizons to include uh, yourself. So, is it sounds, but it does sound like a band, not reborn, because you always sound great, but it has a real kind of energy to it, as well as your usual, you know, uh, range of targets from contemporary culture. Yeah, uh, we, we, we kind of didn't realise that until probably once we recorded it, because generally what happens is we just have a batch of songs uh, and we just go in. And we just, I mean, it's, 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 there's never obviously any concept behind stuff. Right. But I think possibly, uh, without sounding too dull here, the difference maybe is that we did kind of rehearse the songs uh, quite well together before we went in and we knew where things were going, we knew what we wanted. And so the lad we were working with in the studio, um, Chris, he, he was fantastic with us and he had a lot to do with it as well. He was very good. And uh, it, it kind of all just must have gelled at some point, I suppose. Yeah. It's very different from my point of view. Is it not? No. I just go in and shout a bit, you know. Do, are you continually, I like to think of you sort of like sponge like as you walk the streets of, of the world, the, the, yeah. uh, like soaking up this stuff until there's sufficient i don't know whether it's rage or rye amusement to think right i've got i've got it now yeah you're correct yeah there's a bit of both <laughs> of as well uh, in fact to be honest even even just this morning coming over on the bus and there's a really really loud kid crying on the bus now i'm okay with that that's fine except that the mother all the way through was just on her mobile to her mate I know. I'm thinking, oh, engage with the child. Enga you know, that yeah. won't happen. You won't get that problem, you know. Yeah, it is. Well, you will, but not, you know, not as much. Yeah. Well, I'm going to ask you quite a, a slightly pretentious question now, given that. Do you kind of see yourself as, a, as a, like a Swiftian moralist? <laughs> you know, not just the kind of court jester, but somebody who's actually, you know, there's some moral weight to what you do. Honestly, Stuart, I just think of myself as kind of the, like the bloke next door to me. <laughs> he, he comes out with the same stuff. Except, you know, he's a car mechanic. Yeah. Uh, and that's all it is. And, I, you know, I can't fix cars, can't even change a plug, to be honest. And I can, I, I can play a rhythm guitar okay to put um, tunes to my statements. He'll just shout them out to me anyway, you know. Yeah. Um, so, uh, the, the, to me, there's no magic formula. There's no... I, I, I don't see myself as any kind of, you know... Uh, as you say, what was that? Swiftian Morris? Swiftian Morris. Like that, yeah. Yeah, I will now. Now you've mentioned that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I, I don't like know where that came well. to me from. It came out of nowhere, but I'm quite proud of that, actually. Yeah. Like, yeah. That, yeah. 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 Do you it think... It'll be the Nova push bike, that could have it... <laughs> <laughs> uh, A hybrid bike rather than a road bike. Absolute blue, I had sympathy, also for Zorro, who was fencing away the abuse. Have the things that exercise you and the things that interest you and the things that irritate you, have they changed since when you were, whatever, 19, or, do you think? No, they, they, they probably haven't. The, the, the detail has probably changed. Yeah. Because obviously people's terminology changes and obviously um, fads are, well, but by the very sense of the word fad, they will change. Yeah. So... Uh, um, and like you know, ordinarily in nineteen what in nineteen eighty four, yeah, for instance, I, I, you know, okay, I thought I hated Nether Shoes. I probably didn't. I just hate you know that that, that kind of yeah. uh, high, high street television was what was probably really you know yeah. annoying me. Yeah. Whereas obviously today, I would kind of maybe um, gloss over that. You know, yeah. Kind of uh, um, point my arrow at something. I don't know, maybe something a bit more specific. I'm trying to think, I'm trying to think, and there seems to be a certain... Well, there's a kind of dismay at all kinds of things. Hipsters, seems to be. Yeah, <laughs> I, I must... Well, yeah, because that it's almost as if hipsterism has gone high street. I know. You know, and there's kind of... Um, I, I, I think, uh, go, if, if I thought about it properly, I think in the 80s, when, when we were kind of mixing, if you like, sport with music, mm. I, I got the impression people were a bit sniffy towards us because of that. It's like, oh, football and music, that can't mix, or even any sport and music or television. You know, kind of what, what would be considered throwaway stuff by the intelligentsia. Yeah. They were a bit sniffy towards... Um, 
anybody kind of um, joining in with their world. And I thought, well, you know, I kind of sort of see people like that. And nowadays, those people who would have been sniffy, they're in charge of everything. I know. So there's more of it. You know, that's, uh, hence your coffee shops, every other shop. Yeah. You know, and, and things like that. I've got nothing against coffee, obviously, you know. No, but um, how much of it can a, a people need? Well, yeah, see, I think I rail against cliche more than anything would be the answer. Yeah, yeah. Paul Denoye in, in uh, Wondrous Place, it made a good observation. Well, I think it's a good observation. I don't know if you agree. That he said that you are sort of of the Liverpool perspective, but they're not quite as well because you, you, you're not... Yeah. You, do you think that's, tr- think that's true? Yeah, I remember reading that because that's a great book, actually. I love that yeah. book. But, um, yeah, when I, when, when I read that, I thought, ah, oh, yeah, he's, he's probably got a point because uh, obviously with us living on the dark side... <laughs> Um, I, 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 I do get over quite a lot here, but then I return home sort of thing. Yeah. And I've never really, just by, you know, by geography, I've never really kind of been involved with anything over here particularly. Although we're not cut out to be like that anyway. But yeah, he's, he's probably right in a, in a way. And I can, you know, I can get on with all people in Liverpool and you know, musicians who I do know. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, we, we've kind of always, I suppose, but been, um, you know, it's kind of, it's a wider river psychologically than... Uh, is that right? Yeah, what, right. What is the difference? And I should say to people, anybody listening in Cornwall who's not sure what we're talking about, <laughs> that we, you're, you're from the Wirral. Yeah. Uh, and how is, that, how is that different from Liverpool itself? I th- well, I think what it is, I don't think... Where, where, where I'm from, obviously, is Birkenhead, which is a town of its own right. 140,000 people, Camel Edge, Shipyard, that's us. You yeah, know. yeah. And we're, we are very, very close to Liverpool and the, 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 the immediate surroundings of Liverpool. And that's who, really, we are in common with. Um, socially, yeah. Now on the Wirral, of course, you've got a motorway going right through the middle of it, which seems at times to be such a cultural divide because you've got the west side of Wirral, or west side, as we like to say in Britain. Right. <laughs> Their west side has Will Coldy, West Kirby, and all the footballers live there, and it is, it's well to do. Yeah. Now a lot of people, like you know, as, you, as you're saying there, um, you know, um, Jim in Padstow, there, he's thinking, what am I talking about? <laughs> but on Hi, the Jim. Eastern, yeah, on the eastern side of Wirral, um, you've got really, you know. It, it, it's just like Liverpool in a way, you know, you've got kind of um, social problems yeah. that, that go with that area. And um, I think perhaps sometimes people think when you on the Liverpool side, because you're from the world, oh, you know, it's, it's, it's all kind of dull, rosy and green and posh kind of thing. Yeah. Um, but the people who, who do know, obviously, you know, um, they, they would just see us as the same as those, you know. Yeah. We're going to finish with, and I recommend anybody who's not already got the new Half Man Half Biscuit record. In fact, anybody who's not already got the entire canon, you know, well, what are you waiting for? But the the new record is the one we plug, I guess. It's available in all good record shops now. Um, the, the, we're going to finish with a track called Not Beds on Quiz Shows, which I absolutely love the idea of what possessed you to apply for this. Are you a connoisseur of quiz shows? I, I am, and that has always been a bugbear, I must admit. You know, I, I do like my quiz shows. Yeah. But, and you're thinking, well, they've gone through all that rigmarole, you know, they've sent off, they've applied, and you think... And then they come out with statements like, oh, oh somebody somewhere down the line must have advised them, look, <laughs> you'll get different subjects because it's a general knowledge thing, this, you know. <laughs> oh, no, it'll be all right, it'll be okay, you know. Jane's with me, she knows everything, you know. <laughs> yeah, she'll know all about crass, won't she? Yeah, but it is like, the, the, thing, that, the thing to his great credit, Richard Osmond, or Richard Osmond always mm. says on Pointless when people say, oh, I don't know much about the, you know, the war, it was a bit before my time, that, yeah, you know, you yeah. think, oh, well, no, don't say that. No, well, he, 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 yeah, he, he's fantastic with that because I thought, uh, I thought somebody may tell him. They go, oh, don't see, they've written a song slagging you off, you know. So I preempted that. Right. I, 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 sent, I sent him a little note saying, look, we're, we're fans of the show. Yeah. It's not that. And, and you know, he, he's, he's got that. It's fine, you know. Yeah. In fact, he sent me back a copy of Alexander Armstrong's CD album as well as a language. Did he? Yeah. Oh, that is absolutely <laughs> brilliant. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, that's made up. Nigel, it's lovely to speak to you. I know that you don't, you, in this crazy business we call show, you don't do much of this sort of stuff. So I am really, we're very honoured that you've chosen to do it. Thank you very much indeed, Stuart. Cheers. Cheers.